Hey everyone, it's been over seven days since my last video, and I must confess, it still astounds me what passes as journalism in the current year. All right, so here we go. Today I'm going to dissect new allegations of sexual assault made against former Canadian radio host Gian Gameshi, as reported by Kevin Donovan, a supposed investigative journalist for the Toronto Star. Because of the previous reporting by Kevin Donovan and a shiftier character named Jesse Brown, Mr. Gomeshi may never be free of new accusers. This new claim, like all the others, combines elements of what everyone has already read in the newspapers, and it combines them in a bizarre way. At this point, all that's required from a woman to get Donovan or another journalist to publish new allegations is that they can show they went on a date with him. Journalists claim to find it compelling that the stories all sound the same, and that gives the women credibility when their accusations match the other reports. But this is only true if they haven't heard the other reports first. In other words, their stories merely match what the women have already read in the newspapers. I find it bizarre that this needs to be said, but apparently it does. Because of the media coverage, none of these new accusers are bringing independent accounts forward. All of their claims have been tainted. They have been tainted by Kevin Donovan and Jesse Brown, the journalists who originally published the allegations. Similar fact evidence cannot be applied here. In fact, new accusers' claims are undermined by the media coverage, and any investigative reporter would know that and start applying a stricter test to the allegations. You'll see the new allegations are not only full of holes, Kevin Donovan did not seem to investigate the claims at all, nor does he report the story honestly. Let's get investigative reporter Kevin Donovan's role clear here. Journalists who give anonymity to women like this new accuser are doing so at the risk of their reputation as a trustworthy journalist. Kevin Donovan is asking the public to take his word that this woman is credible and implies he has investigated on our behalf. I'm not buying it. He even published evidence that contradicts her story. He published things that should have made him doubt her. The article itself is bizarre. It reads like two articles pasted together. The first part is misleading, but is actually shaped like a normal article. Then, after telling us that there's another trial in June, he tacks on, without segue, a detailed description of the allegations at the end. I want to deal with it as two separate articles with two different sets of problems, and we'll start with the last part first. The crazy story we're being asked to believe. From the article. The Star's letter to Gameshi states... You encouraged the woman to lie on a one-person chaise lounge looking at the stars. You were sitting in a chair beside her. When she was looking at the stars without consent, you jumped on her, putting the full weight of your body on top of the woman. You put both hands around her throat and choked her, while kissing her aggressively and trying to force your tongue down her throat. You removed one of your hands and thrust it between her legs. The woman was wearing tights. You said to the woman, I'm going to fuck you so hard you won't be able to walk for a week, and I'm going to stick my finger inside of you and fuck you so hard. During this time, according to the woman, you made deep, guttural, animal-style sounds. The woman managed to extricate herself from the situation by pushing you away. She recalls saying, too fast, too fast. She made an excuse to leave, and you insisted on walking her to her car a few blocks away. You gave her a kiss on the cheek. And then he tells us they didn't get a response to that letter from either Marie Hennen, Gameshi's lawyer, or from, obviously, Gameshi himself. Now, I've actually tried to do this thing that Gameshi was accused of doing. It's absurd, and it doesn't mesh with the way real people move. I got John the other to lie down on my couch and tried to duplicate what this woman said happened. He was not amused. It doesn't work, not even in slow motion. But let's go through it. I built a pillow person for this purpose. She's lovely. First of all, we have the lunge. 
watching the stars, la di da di da and then cowabunga, and then choke without stabilizing your body. Surfing on top of a pillow person is doable, but on a real person with bones, it's a lot harder to pull off. Your legs keep slipping off, especially if your hands are on her neck. You're not balancing your body, so let's assume he actually straddled her instead, like a normal human would. la di da di da and cowabunga! Notice my ass in the air, and my body weight is mostly on my own legs. The next problem is that he's supposed to have pulled one hand away and shoved it between her legs. This is a very awkward thing to do when you're on top of someone. You can't reach around, you have to reach through your own legs. I don't have a go-go gadget arm. The only direction my arm can go while I'm kissing and choking her is downward. You can get your hand turned back upwards, but it's really awkward. I'd have to be lying next to her to get a good angle at her crotch, but she was on a single chaise lounge and he was on top of her. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying it's highly unlikely, even without taking in the more important problems with her story. Now the biggest problem with her story is the lead up to the Kawabunga moment. Before Gameshi supposedly attacked her, we're told that Gameshi began telling her that he suffered from anxiety and had recently lost a keepsake during an Air Canada flight when his luggage went missing. He wouldn't say what it was. I don't know if I can trust you yet, he said. We've been told numerous times by other women who dated him for months without getting any action that they felt they got away because he didn't trust them. Ruth Spencer said in The Guardian after dating him for five months, Gian Gameshi still didn't think that she was ready. She says, but amid the nights out at premieres and fancy dinners, something wasn't right. Gian refused to have sex with me. You're not ready, he told me, over and over. I shrugged it off. Some people will wait, right? Maybe he just really liked me. Maybe something was wrong with him, and he wanted to wait until he knew I liked him to reveal it. Now I know what that was. In Kevin Donovan's article, Two Things Can't Be the Same, Either Gian trusted her enough to show her his dark side, or he didn't. I don't know which part is the lie, but I know one of them is a lie, and that discredits the entire article. Did Gian not trust this woman enough to tell her about his missing keepsake? Which I'm fairly certain was inserted into the article to make us think about his teddy bear. Or did he not assault her? The two parts of the story don't go together, and I frankly don't care which one is the lie. I actually think both parts are a lie. Maybe you think that Gian would assault a woman revealing his supposed super secret inner monster while also saying that he doesn't trust her yet, but that would just make you as stupid as Kevin Donovan. Now, I want to make something clear to you and to the Toronto Star who employs Mr. Donovan. Kevin Donovan wrote a book that was supposed to be published in the summer of last year. That book was about the amazing investigation into Gian Gameshi's sex life and the allegations against him. The book has not yet been published, and Kevin Donovan has been silent on why. But he's got a finished book that can now only be published if you believe Gian Gameshi is guilty after all three women accusing him in court were found to have been lying. I was quite surprised to even see him reporting on the trial while it was taking place given his vested interest in Gomeshi's guilt. One thing you won't find in Kevin Donovan's recent article claiming to have a new accuser is a disclosure of how he will, Donovan himself, benefit if you continue to believe Gian Gomeshi is guilty. He will benefit financially, not just by fixing his reputation as the journalist who was wrong about Gomeshi, but trust him now, Kevin Donovan and Jesse Brown lost credibility when Gameshi's accusers, who Donovan and Brown recruited and coordinated, all turned out to be liars. He needs to recover from that, so he's selling you a new one. One thing Donovan does not tell us when he reports this story is that at the exact same time as these allegations, June through August of 2013, a writer named Carla Ciccone had just published her Bad Date article that caused a huge public outrage. It was the first time any information about Gian Gomeshi's dating life had been published, and Gomeshi, who we know suffers from anxiety, 
was extremely stressed out about it. Of all the times in Mr. Gameshi's life, prior to Jesse Brown and Kevin Donovan harassing him a year later, this exact time frame would not have been a time when Gameshi would have assaulted an unsuspecting date. But Donovan doesn't say a word about it. He's supposed to be an investigative journalist. Well, I'm just a vlogger who works a day job all week. Yet I knew about the Ciccone problem as soon as I heard the date of the accusations. Donovan didn't indicate he'd checked the weather on the dates she gives. He doesn't say he verified her social media when she claims that she wasn't really sick. And though he tells us that she was lying when she said she was sick after the supposed incident, he then tells us that she had such a bad week she was homeless by the end of it. Did Donovan investigate that? Why was she homeless? Even if she hadn't been literally sick, moving is extremely stressful, especially when you don't have an actual home to move to. This woman just sounds like a shit show. Always sick, and now homeless. Who needs the baggage, right? In fact, Gian Gameshi had just bought a new house at exactly this time, and was getting ready to move. He was probably relieved that Ms. Anonymous didn't ask to stay at his place. Other conflicting details of importance. Donovan tells us Gomeshi ran a countdown texting in anticipation. 53 hours, he wrote at one point. Unless that's creepy, in which case I've not started any such thing. This actually proves that Gomeshi was worried about other people's perceptions of him and cared about not being creepy or overwhelming. Donovan tells us that Ms. Liarpants told Gomeshi she couldn't stay late because she had to work in the morning, and then he tells us that she had to make up a reason to leave. In part one of the article, we are told that the woman wriggled free, and in part two, she managed to push him away. This is a minor inconsistency, but it's contained within the very same article. This seems like nitpicking, but we must do that when seeking the truth. Wriggling would have made it even harder for him to have pulled off the cunning stunt of maneuvers that I found difficult to perform on a pillow doll who didn't even fight back. Donovan asks us, the public, to believe this woman's story because he, an investigative journalist, is vouching for her credibility. Aside from no actual investigation seeming to have happened, in part one of his article, he goes to law professor Elizabeth Sheehy as an expert on sexual assault. Any investigative journalist should know that Sheehy was exposed as a lunatic when she wrote a book called Defending Battered Women on Trial, published at the end of 2013, saying that women are doing a public service when they kill men. Sheehy claimed it was a waste of public tax dollars to prosecute women for murder when they kill a man in his sleep even, reason being they almost never get convicted. In fact, according to Sheehy, the lowest conviction rate for a crime isn't rape, it's women who kill men. Here's what CBC's Anna Maria Tremont found out when she questioned Elizabeth Sheehy on her so-called expertise. Mm. What, and so you're saying the same thing would be true for men who are abused by their partners, either male or female? Well, I don't, I'm not an expert in men's experience of violence at the hands of women. You'd have to find a different expert on that topic. But if you well, were... Or, or same-sex, or same you know, women who are, are victims of other women in a relationship. Well, again, I'm not an expert on that. Mm. And it, it, they may face similar problems. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Um, uh, well, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for um, explaining to us where you stand on this. Donovan also quotes David Butt, a defense lawyer, without disclosing to the reader that Mr. Butt represented a witness in the first Gomeshi trial. Conflict of interest? So, to the Toronto Star... You should rethink the word investigator in Kevin Donovan's byline. You should rethink letting Kevin Donovan publish anything in your paper about Gian Gameshi at all. And you should apologize to the public for reporting gossip as if it is news. It was an abuse of journalism. Kevin Donovan actually thought it was important to tell us that Gian Gameshi likes butter chicken. You know what? I like butter chicken. I had some last week. And I'd even order it again.